You're listening to Forward Faster, bite-sized insights for entrepreneurs. Welcome to the Next Core podcast series. I'm Holly Barrett, the marketing director at Next Core, and I'm so happy today to have Dr. Nish Sonwalker with us, and he is founder of Sun Density. Nish, welcome. Thank you. Now, you have a uh, clean technology. Can you tell us a little bit about Sun Density's um, technology and, and really what you're trying to achieve in the marketplace? Sure. Uh, Sun Density is uh, dedicated to bring some of the groundbreaking photonics innovations into improving the efficiency of not only solar panels, but also of the electronic devices and also architectural glass. So we are solving a bigger problem of shifting the wavelength of photons in a way that really matches with the performance of an electronic device. And that goes far beyond just the solar, but our focus area is to save the world by reducing the carbon emission by improving lots of adoption of solar energy, by improving the efficiency of the solar panels by almost uh, 6 to 8 percent, uh, full percentage points. That leads to about 20 percent increase in the power generation, reduces the price of the electricity significantly. So it becomes in parity with the grid. That is about 3 cents per watt. So I think that's where our goal is. That's amazing because right now uh, in the marketplace, especially for for solar, right, you know, uh, a lot of people have started to adopt that. Uh, We see those panels now in in panel farms that are on highways and things like that. So this is a huge need to increase that power uh, availability as well as reduce the, you know, the drain uh, in terms of uh, some of that energy consumption. Um, What are some of the other kind of uh, devices that this technology might be used for? Yeah, one of the important uh, devices, as you know, is, uh, is is the cameras. So if you look at nine vision, night vision cameras or any other CCD uh, cameras, which essentially use silicon detector for the photons, we can shape the photons in a way that their quantum efficiency goes by 10%. That means you can work with almost one-tenth of the light that you need today. So, for example, the camera that is recording our conversation today, uh, we would probably not even need lights. Uh, We could do it in natural light, Uh, primarily because the device is only recording the photons that are required for that particular, uh, you know, detector. So now detector becomes highly sensitive. And so I think that is one of the other applications. The other application that everyone can relate is windows. So if you have windows in the in hot summer, you want it to repel the heat out. And in the cold winter, you want heat to come in. So we can design coatings that will essentially adaptively figure out based on environment whether they should let the heat in or let the heat out. So these will be smart windows, or you can call it... Uh, thermally sensitive windows that can be created using our uh, nano-optical photonic smart coatings. That is amazing. So so with the photonic smart coatings, what, what is like, um, have you done the projections around what's the market opportunity? Are we talking, this, this seems like it could be a billion dollar opportunity. So I think there are, I kind of mentioned three markets to you. Uh, solar market is one of the most, uh, I would say, fast growing market. So almost, uh, if you look at 31.2 percentage uh, CAGR, cumulative annual growth rate, and that is going to be installing about 100 gigawatts of solar panels. That means about billion panels that has to be coated. So that is the fast growing market, not only in U.S., but also across the world. So I think that's, uh, and that, if you look at our price point, our price is $3 for the coating for a two-square-meter glass, which is the solar glass for a panel. And uh, we produce a value of $21. So we have about $17 in order to play with. Mm-hmm. So I think if you look at billion dollar, and if even if we make $5 uh, dollar per panel, and if we are able to reach billion panels, we have a $5 billion opportunity. Not that we can reach all of it, but even certain percentage of it will be very, very 
lucrative and profitable business for us. Well, it seems like in addition to the profitability, there's a huge uh, profit to be gained, I think, from an environmental perspective as we grapple with this climate change. Um, And I'm excited about that because we have to go more green. But you're a Boston guy. So what's a Boston guy coming to Rochester for? Um, what are you, what are you uh, specifically coming to, to tap in this marketplace? And uh, what does Rochester have that Boston doesn't? Um, other than the Red, uh, the Red Sox <laughs> and, you know, some other good sports teams. <laughs> <laughs> we can debate that all day long, right? So in terms of uh, uh, Rochester, is the photonic capital of the United States. So Boston, I, I'm, uh, I grew up in Boston almost half of my life there, having gone to MIT as a student and then as a faculty. But what we realized that the photonics that's happening at RIT as well as at UFR is uh, impeccable. And more than the universities, I think the manufacturing part, mm. which is uh, happening in the photonic industry, if you look at just the Rochester area, about 70 to 80 companies are dedicated to photonics. So I think we wanted to be in the ambiance or in the ecosystem that really uh, understands the photonics and also the workforce that we need to develop our manufacturing in the area of New York. And as you know, with the New York uh, Empire State Development and all of these entities, they are really encouraging many uh, smart companies as well as high-tech companies, uh, especially advanced manufacturing, to move to New York. And I think they have given us a lot of incentive. And I think one of the other reasons is Luminate, because Luminate is the only photonics incubator. And so we are in the great company with the great advisors and also the director of Luminate, Sujata, is doing a great job in terms of attracting the right talents in this arena. So I think we feel very comfortable uh, being here. So I'm almost like part-time citizen (laughs) of uh, Rochester now. That's awesome. And we're so glad to have you, by the way. Thank you. Now, you um, were a runner-up in Luminate, and thank you for mentioning that. Um, and you've applied to see if you could get into being a part of Cohort 3. Uh, what, uh, what are you, what's most tangible, and what would you hope to achieve if you were participating in, in Cohort 3 this year? So I think we started about uh, six months back uh, in terms of Cohort 2, and we established a lot of relationship with RIT and UFR. So we have already begun the work, and we already have established some of the connectivity that we need. Uh, The major important thing that we want to establish with the cohort three is to continue that good work and reach certain goals for the business development. And I think that's where Luminate and the connectivity with the right kind of investors is extremely important for us. Because these kinds of advanced manufacturing requires a lot of intensity in terms of the funding. Mm-hmm. in terms of investment. And so I think having uh, or becoming part of Core 3 will definitely help us. And hopefully we can then get the, as they say, get the home run done in terms of the funding that we need to really create an established company in the Rochester area. Right. And I could probably see you also uh, maybe perhaps applying and participating in the hardware scale-up program because of the connection to clean energy and uh, scaling your manufacturing operations here as well. So that could be something that uh, could be beneficial. But, um, you know, you get up every day, and as an entrepreneur, uh, it's it's such a challenge to get a, a startup off the ground. Um, what are some words of advice that you could provide to startup companies? companies of, of uh, what have you learned and what can you share right. with people? I think startup company is a very challenging job and you wake up every night <laughs> crying, as they say. Uh, you sleep <laughs> Hopefully like not a, crying. You, you, say you sleep like a child, but the child wakes up every an hour and cries, right? So essentially what we are always worried about is that what is that next challenge that will come to us and how we solve that. These are all almost technical challenges as, as well as financial challenges. So I, my advice to all the entrepreneurs is that, number one, is the scale-up process is, is more difficult than what you think of. So you have a great idea. You proved it in a lab, and you are very excited about it. You are going to change the world. But the world is not easy to change. Mm. So I think you really have to take the steps in order to grow the company to the scale. 
And that scale-up process requires a lot more effort than the lab experiment that was extremely successful. So I think, uh, and that's what we are struggling in terms of our own technology right now. Highly sophisticated technology, high-tech, uh, coating, high vacuum, all of those equipment that we need are expensive, and the quality has to be extremely high with the clean rooms and things like that. So it's not easy to create millions of panels coated with photonic smart coating. And I think that's where, once we reach that, I think we are golden. So I think we are hoping that by uh, taking away problems step by step, we'll mm. ultimately reach the goal that we want to do. At the same time, we are under the time pressure because we have to reach that goal as soon as possible because competition is also doing the things that we are doing. Yep. So we want to reach the market and dominate the market and take over the market before everyone else jumps into it. And plus, there are big players uh, with lots of money uh, we are competing against. So I think we have to be really careful about our intellectual property, make sure we have a proper patenting. So there are lots of stuff that goes on. Mm -hmm. But if you want to dominate the market and get in the market fast, it's probably easy to say, take advantage of the resources that are around and ask for help, right? Uh, because you need that extra energy and momentum behind the business to elevate it. That is exactly why Rochester is the right place for a photonics company like us. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what inspires you when you when you have some downtime and you need to kind of recharge? Uh, is there a particular person or a book or or something that that kind of adds a little extra step to your day? So I think I'm researcher at heart. So I look at all the new technologies that are coming up, especially in photonics now. And there are so much amazing work going on in terms of metamaterials and photonic crystals that it really excites my interest. In terms of people, I think I'm a big fan of Richard Feynman and the way he approached life as well as uh, difficult problems in physics and explained that to the world. So I think uh, as scientists and engineers and entrepreneurs, we have to do a lot of uh, explaining of our difficult ideas in very simple languages. Mm -hmm. So I think anyone who communicates science better, uh, if you look at uh, 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 Neil Grass Tyson, who is now talking about the whole bunch of uh, uh, the new science that is coming out, I think those are the things that we really have to communicate to everyone. We can't be a nerd sitting in the corner and say, this mm. is what I do. So I think this change from really... Um, lab rat to an entrepreneur we have, where you have to explain everyone what you do is a, is a big shift. And I think it's not easy shift, especially for us who do not want to talk. So I think that's, uh, that's very exciting. And that excites me when people articulate their ideas so well and are able to get their point across. Well said, because I just read the article uh, about the three physicists uh, getting the Nobel Prize, and I was like, what? Now, now what did they do? <laughs> so maybe after this podcast, I'll have to sit down with you and get a, an introduction to uh, some of the more novel things that are happening. But I so appreciate you spending time today with us, and gosh, I hope this uh, really, you can get it off the ground and get it going, because it's definitely, you know, uh, smart coatings is something that we need, and especially when it comes to saving the environment and, and helping push these new technologies along. Uh, I think you're the guy. Thank you very much, Nish. Thank you. Thank you for uh, this podcast.